I'm Dr. Matt Ashley, Associate Medical Director at Teleflex and Urologist in Bend, Oregon. In this procedure, I use both the Urolift 2 system, or UL2, to treat lateral lobes, and the Urolift ATC Advanced Tissue Control System to treat the obstructive median lobe. This patient is a 67-year-old male with predominantly obstructive voiding symptoms. His prostate measured 24 cc's via truss. While off finasteride, his pre-procedure symptom score was 20, and his quality of life score was 5. While on finasteride, his scores dropped to 9 and 3 respectively. He was experiencing sexual side effects from his BPH medication and presented with questions about options to stop the medication. I start with a flexible cystoscopic assessment. The retroflexed view of the bladder outlet shows a ball valving median lobe that is partially intraprostatic and a low to moderate degree of intravesical extension of the prostate overall. Here, with the scope at the viru montanum, notice the occlusive lateral lobe hyperplasia. As the scope moves into the proximal prostatic urethra, the obstructive median lobe, or OML, becomes visible. I confirm a sulcus is present on at least one side of the median lobe. Knowing which side is deeper helps me with procedural planning, even though I will test the OML for movement favorability after treating the lateral lobes. I begin by placing the proximal lateral lobe implants using the UL2. With the device tip in the bladder, I rotate the device to treat the left lobe first. Starting with the keyhole at the bladder neck and then moving distal 1.5 centimeters allows me to confidently treat the proximal tissue. I create an anterior channel by keeping the device tip in the anterior one-third of the gland. Angling the implant deployment to either 2 or 10 o'clock helps me maximize the anterior lift. This is a key planning step in OML cases. I think of it as raising the roof. I carefully pass over the bladder neck and OML tissue to minimize mucosal contact and maintain visualization. The right proximal and both distal implants are placed utilizing the standard implant technique for a total of four lateral lobe implants. Using the UL2 with an inserted scope seal, I visually assess the placed implants. I see that, Though we have created an anterior channel, the OML remains obstructive. Next, I exchange the scope seal for a spent UL2 implant cartridge in the delivery handle and test the mobility of the OML. Best practices for OML treatment include treating the lateral lobes first, targeting implants at greater than or equal to 1.5 centimeters from the bladder neck, and the needle trajectory between 3 to 4 or 8 to 9 o'clock to avoid the neurovascular bundles. The ATC wings help immensely in engaging and controlling the OML tissue, while the needle location markers help with needle targeting. Therefore, after I determine the direction of mobility, I switch to the ATC device. I start with the keyhole at the bladder neck, then drop the ATC wings over the OML and slowly rotate the device clockwise while gently retracting the OML distally into the prostatic urethra and laterally toward the patient's right side. This is a slow, deliberate process. I pay close attention to the ATC's wings and do not retract against resistance. I then ensure I have an appropriate angle of compression, generally greater than with lateral lobes. I deploy and retract the needle. Then, I perform the white line maneuver by slowly advancing proximal while looking for the white line to appear on the suture. I take care to not advance too close to the bladder before placing the urethral end piece and completing the implant. After the first OML implant, I reassess the anatomy and feel there is still opportunity for movement of the OML. I decide to use another ATC device. Using the same technique as before, starting with the keyhole and needle location markers at the bladder neck, I re-engage the OML with the flexible stainless steel wings, pull the tissue into the prostatic urethra, and compress posterior laterally.
Once the OML is sufficiently compressed, I deploy the needle, which is aligned with the needle location markers on the wings. Again, after needle retraction, I advance very slowly toward the bladder until I see the white line, and then place the urethral end piece and cut the suture, completing the implant. I switch back to the UL2 with scope seal to survey the full prostatic urethra and placed implants. It shows a continuous anterior channel from viru to bladder neck with minimal bleeding or mucosal disruption and complete resolution of the median lobe obstruction. I saw this patient six weeks post-procedure. The patient was able to discontinue the medication, which had unwanted side effects, and improve his scores off finasteride. The symptom score off finasteride went from 20 pre-procedure to 7 post-procedure, and quality of life went from 5 pre-procedure to 1 post-procedure.